Time to figure out the sizes for your doors. Now, there's a couple steps to this. First, how big is your opening? Now, this represents just the right side of the cabinet I'm building. And I know that it's 25 inches wide from here to here and 31 inches from there to there. And that's inside to inside. Now, when you're doing doors, it's exactly the same as a drawer. You want to add a half inch on both ends and both sides. So my door, when I'm all done, will need to be 26 this way and 32 up and down. So if I built one door, only one, and it, it, ha it would have to be 26 by 32 when I'm done, and it's one gigantic door. Now, I didn't want it to stick out in the bedroom that far, so I cut it in half, so I'll have two handles here and it'll open out, which means the doors will be half that size. So my actual door sizes for each one, and they're both gonna be the same, the height will be the same. They're gonna, they're gonna have to be 32 inches long. The width though, I simply just divide by two. So they're gonna be 13. And I'll need two of them. So this is where I'm basing everything off of. That is how big my doors need to be. Now if you're doing two slab doors, there it is, that's all you need. But we're doing a raised panel door, very similar to the sides that we did. It has a raised panel and a cathedral on both the top and the bottom. Now your door could have a cathedral at the top only and a flat one at the bottom, just like we did your sides, and that's perfectly fine. I just wanted to show you that as we're building, there are different options. You could also put in what's called a flat panel. Flat panel means it's not a three quarter inch thick center panel that we had to do that scoop cut on. Flat panel, you simply cut out the shape and it fits right in, there's no cutting. That's also perfectly fine. Saves a little bit of time, um, but some people like the thicker panels. It just depends on what you want. So we're doing a thick panel. Now what we need to do is break this down into its parts. So if I draw a door, a simple one right here, you'll have two styles and a rail that goes like that and a rail that goes like that. So they're gonna be opposite each other. Now I already know that the total is gonna to be 32. That's how tall it has to be. And I know that this has to be 13 from there to there, side to side. But now we need to break it down to its parts. So we're going to go over this very similar to the way we did the sides. All of these are going to be two and a half here to here. And at the thin point, that's also going to be two and a half. But I know from here to here is four and a half. Those are all just standards that I can give you and I can repeat to you if you need. So I've got two doors. So let's start writing a cut list. I need four styles, four rails, two panels. So at least I've got all my pieces identified. Let's do the styles first. Those are easiest. How wide are they? All of my vertical styles are two and a half. Okay? And my rails, I've already told you, I know that they're going to be four and a half at the widest point. Okay, so those are in. What length are my styles? They are 32. Now, how long are my rails? I need to know what they are from here to here. Now remember, just like your sides, they stick in 3 eighths of an inch per side. So whatever I get there to there, I have to add 3 fourths of an inch to that measurement. So if I have 13, subtract 2 and a half, subtract 2 and a half. 13 minus 5 is 8. Okay? So that's 8 from there to there plus 3 fourths. Good. We've got your styles and rails done. Now we do the panel, and this is all ideal measurements. The panel, remember that the width of the panel is the same as the length of the rails, and that applies here too. So I can immediately go over and put down eight and three fourths by whatever my length is. We do the same measurements, the same subtraction that we did before. 32 minus the thinnest part, two and a half and two and a half. So 32 minus five, 27 and three fourths. We've got to add that three-fourths for the exact same reason that it sticks in, that we did on the side. It sticks out three-eighths of an inch per end. So that is my ideal cut list. Now it gets a little bit complicated. So here's the part of this that is a bit complicated. And this is something that I don't teach the beginning classes. They make all their doors ideal size and they actually end up a little bit smaller than ideal, which is okay because of the half-inch overlay. There's a little bit of give and take. 
But for the advanced guys, I want you to be able to build doors that are exactly the size you had planned. If you build them exactly to this size, there's no way to glue them up so that this joint here and here and down there is perfect. It'll be close, but no matter what, we've got to shave the top and shave the bottom. And if, even if this is perfectly parallel when you put it together, it still ends up being a little bit on the small side because of the shaping that we do. So no matter what we do, if we build it to this size exactly, the door's gonna end up slightly smaller than what we wanted. So all we're gonna do is we're going to make it a little bigger. Now I do not want to touch the panel. The panel is, is right. All I have to do is make these pieces a little bit wider or longer. Okay, let me get rid of that circle. So here's what we do. We wanted a quarter of an inch oversize. We're gonna add one fourth of an inch to my width and to my length. And we do that by making these, instead of two and a half, making them two and five eighths. That's an eighth of an inch bigger than two and a half. Now, by doing that, I simply will add on, and this is gonna be exaggerated, but you'll see what I mean. Add a little there, I'll add a little there, add a little onto that, and onto that. All right, so it's a little, like I said, exaggerated, it's a little bit extra, but you get the point. I've now made that wider. So instead of four and a half, I'll make these four and five eighths. Instead of two and a half, these will be two and five eighths. So my new ideal cut list, four pieces, two and five eighths by something. Four pieces, four and five eighths by something else. And then I already told you that's not changing. The panel, I do not want to change because it won't. Those measurements will be the same, 27 and 3 fourths. There we go. I can draw my four. There we go. So what do we do with, what does that change? Now, the rails, the length of these rails doesn't actually change a bit. I didn't change this dimension. I just made these a little wider. So this length stays the same, 8 and 3 fourths. Okay? Now the length of these, you see how this doesn't match up. I have to account for that eighth of an inch and that eighth of an inch that I put on the ends of these boards. Eighth plus an eighth is a quarter of an inch. All I have to do is add a quarter of an inch to the length of those styles. 32 and 1 fourth. And you're done. It's not very hard, but you need to know what to account for. So instead of two and a half, there's two and five eighths. Instead of four and a half, there's four and five eighths. And I added a little bit onto that, to the length of that style. And that's it. This is now what you're going to cut in the shop. Cut these pieces out, and then we'll run them through the shaper, and then we'll get, take care of the panel and all those little things that we need to make these, drawer, these doors work. Then we'll be able to have room to cut them to exact size and get them perfectly square so they fit correctly. Once you have all of your pieces cut, it's back to shaper number one. Draw an X on your best face, put the X down, and trim the ends of your rails. For any of the rails that require a cathedral, take the proper template, put it in tight, still with your X facing down, and draw the line. Then go to the bandsaw and cut it out, cutting away from the line. Take all of your rail pieces you just cut on the bandsaw to shaper number five. Put the X down on the table, replace the pattern on top, and shave carefully and slowly along the shaper edge to put the profile on. Now shape one edge of any of your straight styles. If any of your rails are straight as well, go ahead and shape one edge of those. And remember, the X is always down. Now take the panels that you have for your doors, and for any cathedral, mark down one and three-fourths, line up your pattern, and trace the image on any end that requires it. After you bandsaw the top, put the pattern back on and shape it from the right to the left. Take your time, especially coming out the other end so you don't get any tear out. 
Now take your piece to shaper number three. Pivot it into the bit. You'll feel the bearing touch the edge and then work your way around. Remember that this shaper makes a lot of sawdust, so you want to make sure to blow it out of the way so you're not putting your board on top of it and getting an uneven cut. Do the ends first and then cut the two edges. Be very careful not to flip the board from one cut to the next. Now take all of your parts to the glue table. Remember to glue the three sides of the pins on the end of the rails. It helps if you have the panel into the style already. Gravity will help hold everything in place. Once you glue the ends of both pins, glue the other side and put on your other style. Tap it together and repeat on both doors. If you have two doors, it helps to glue them at the same time side by side. If they're smaller, you can put them in the same clamps. If not, grab two more clamps. Once they're tight, the joints are closed, put them off the table onto the side of the wall. Take your doors, set up the wide belt sander, and run them through both sides until they're both flat and smooth. I don't like sanding them any further than 0.8, however you need to sand them until the joints are all smooth and even. The next step that we're going to do for your doors after you're done sanding them is we need to cut them to size. Now, your doors right now are a quarter of an inch too big, both width and length. We're just going to square them as if they were a regular piece of wood. If I had a board this size, how do you square it? Step one is joint the edge. Step two, trim an end, and we're going to use the sled for that. Then step three and four is cut off the other edge and cut off the end. So first step, joint the edge. Now take your doors to the cutoff sled and trim off one end. Take them to the table saw to cut off the remaining end, but be careful Cutting this long, you need to have it nice and tight against the fence. Any movement, and you could get a kickback. Next, cut off the remaining bad edge, and now you have a perfectly squared door. Take your doors to shaper number four. And when you're doing the decorative edge, make sure to hold it down close to the blade. Cut both ends first, and then cut the edges. Be careful not to flip the door between cuts. One of the last things we need to do before we can put hinges on and attach them to your actual project is we need to bore the holes for the hinges. Now that's what these, this machine does. You press a little button and it drills the hole for you just fine. But here's the thing that people make a lot of mistakes on. My doors are symmetrical. In other words, the top looks exactly like the bottom. If I put them on upside down, they look exactly the same. Now if you have doors like that, whether they have a cathedral or they're straight, it doesn't matter, that's fine. Essentially you just pick your spot, bore two holes, and you can put them wherever you want because they'll look correct. If you're doing doors, say, that has a cathedral on the top and a straight board on the bottom, you have a definite top and you have a definite bottom. You need to make sure the bore, to bore the holes so that the doors, when they go on, look correct. So the top is definitely on the top and the bottom is bottom. So I need to bore here and here and here and here. If I accidentally bore on this side on this one, then I've got two doors that go on the right. So make absolutely sure. If you have non-symmetrical doors that you bore them correctly. With symmetrical ones like this, just pick a side and bore some holes. So here's kind of how you do that. Decide where you want your hinge. What looks about right? For mine, I'm just pointing, you know, I want it approximately where the bottom of this is there. That's about where I want it. All I do is I can, even if you want, you can pull this out and this part lifts up and you can see the blade. That's about where I want it. I can see kind of centered down. And then look at the board. I've got numbers all the way along the boards, both directions. It's at about number three. So. We take a pin, and this is just a shelf pin. If I lose it, I've had a million more in the back. I'll just pull one out for you. You simply take the pin, stick it in number three. Let's close that back in. Push your door up against that pin, and press and hold the button until it stops itself. All right, then I put that aside and repeat on the other door. Remember, this is only for symmetrical doors, that this works this way. If it does get stuck like mine did, do it again. There. 
That happens all the time, especially on the harder woods. Now you simply take the pin out, move it down to the other side, number three, and do it again. There we go. Two cuts, and that one's fine. And then we repeat on the other side, the last one. Now is the time to sand them. You want to do that before you put the hinges in. If you don't, it's hard to sand around the metal hinges. But once you're all set, these are the hinges you're looking for. They look like that. They're just one unit. They have little prongs on the back here and here that the face frame will go in. And I'll demonstrate that in a minute. But they have to tap in with a hammer. So we simply take a little hammer, put it in place, and just tap. Now remember, if you hit this too hard, you're going to break your door. And not many things will bring tears to your eyes more than breaking your door and having to start over. Take the piece, put it in place, and just tap it right in. Then, of course, repeat on the other one and get those in. Now it's time to attach the doors. Set that there, get a little sawdust off. But you need to make sure, again, to use the right screw. So if I hold this up to the camera, it's a nice half inch long, five eighths screw, excuse me, five eighths long, but it's got a pan head. It's got a really rough teeth configurement and it bores its own hole from the tip. So that's the screw you want. That'll put the door in. Impact driver, regular drill, doesn't matter, they both work. But what you do need to do is figure out where this goes. Now the hinges, like I said, have those little prongs on. They actually surround the face frame. So they go on like that. Your goal is to make the distance of overlap from the bottom the exact same as the top. Now sometimes it's easier to just have a friend hold it in place while you screw it in. But when I put my drawers in, I used a spacer board, okay, a big piece of wood, and I still have it. The easiest way is to just find that half inch spacer board, put your door on top of it, and that will hold it in place, and then screw it in. Everybody's project is going to be different, but essentially your goal is to make the overlap, the overhang, exactly the same. So get that in nice and straight, and then just put a screw in the hinge. Be careful, don't over tighten the screw, you'll strip it out. If you do that, we'll have to put in a longer screw. And while that's not the end of the world, it just is better if you just use the proper screw and don't strip it out. Okay, and then just remove the spacer, move down and do the other side. Now once you have those in, if the space is too big, which mine is, then all you've got to do is play with the screws. There's one screw in the front and there's one screw in the back. The one in the front is the one you're going to use most often. If I need to move the doors together, then I tighten those screws and the door goes opposite that direction. Same with the other one. So I just play with those, those screws until the gap I'm happy with, until the door's lined up. The doors will move an eighth of an inch left, right, up, down, and in and out, depending on what you need. So play with those adjustment screws until you get them the way you like.